Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastycheats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I created this concept artwork and also discuss the importance of layer structure and housekeeping in Adobe Photoshop. Now, what I'm hoping you guys can get out of this video is to recognize the importance of housekeeping and paying close attention to your layer structure in the layers panel, as well as your creative composition in the canvas area in Photoshop. If this is something that has not occurred to you, then I hope this video helps you think a little more about this. Now, some of you may think it's a boring issue to keep your layers in check, but what you will find is the more organized you are with your layer structure, the more proficient you will become at creating and implementing your design in Photoshop. The more you understand how layers work together, the more you will see the potential to be creative and make Photoshop work for you. The more you think ahead and anticipate creative tasks in Photoshop, the smoother your workflow will become and you will find yourself spending less time in future picking apart your documents. There is nothing that cannot be achieved in Photoshop. It's not always what's going on in the canvas area that creates the artwork. It's often the meticulous structure in the layers panel that defines the outcome. It really comes down to your knowledge and understanding of how layers, filters, masks and blending modes work together in a hierarchy to achieve a particular effect. One of the interesting things I find about Photoshop is there is not always one way of doing something. Photoshop allows for creativity to take place to discover multiple ways of creating a specific effect. In a previous tutorial, I demonstrated a way to create a gold skin effect. The layer structure in that example consisted of multiple layers, filters and blending modes created in the right order to achieve the effect. If you would like to watch this video, you can find the link in the PDF worksheet that goes with this video. The link is in the description. So more often than not, it just comes down to your layer structure that defines an effect. And it's not just about creative discovery. If you're in the design industry or looking to be in the design industry, the chances are your files will be seen, managed or even changed by other designers. So it really does help not only for yourself, but for others to be neat and tidy. Now for this tutorial, I'll be using this composition you see here. This artwork is actually a really simple graphic composition, but the basic principles apply, which we will be finding out shortly. So in this video, I will be covering how I used linked smart objects to add creative elements to the composition, how I created the color effect you see around the outside of the artwork, how I composed the overall layout with the use of layer masks, how I composed the text, and how I organized the layers in the layers panel. If you wish to take a closer look at this document and have a go yourself, you can find the project folder download link in the PDF worksheet which you can download for free, the link is in the description. You will also need to install the fonts too, and you can get the link for this in the PDF worksheet. So with the document open, we can see that this composition consists of five main elements, and we can see them clearly labeled in their own layer groups in the layers panel. Also, we can see that each folder has its own color label. So I'll quickly toggle the visibility of each group so first we have the background group, which consists of a single black base layer. Next, we have the pattern group, and inside this group is a linked smart object. This creative element has been placed inside this composition. Now, if I double click on this smart object, this is going to open up a new tab and display the creative in its own document that was prepared earlier. I'll press Command W to close the document and come back into our work document. Also notice to the folder group, we have a layer mask applied. If I disable the layer mask by right clicking and selecting disable layer mask, we can see that it's this layer mask that's creating the black stroke around the outside of the artwork. Next, we have the gradient folder. Now this is a single layer with a color gradient effect and to the layer, we have a blending mode multiply applied. Notice how the name of this layer 
has the word multiply in brackets to remind us of this at a glance, which remind us of which blending mode is applied. Also notice to the folder group, we have a layer mask applied. If I disable the layer mask by right clicking and selecting disable layer mask, we can see that it's this layer mask that is creating the frame around the golden image and exposing the white pattern through. Next, we have the gold face folder. Inside this folder, we have an image. And if we look closely at the thumbnail, we can see that like the texture background, this is also a linked smart object. If I double click in the image thumbnail, this will open up a tab to reveal a gold face document, which we learned how to create in the previous tutorial. I'll press Command W to close the document and come back into our work document. Notice that to this linked smart object, there is a brightness and contrast adjustment layer applied. And this is there to boost the shine of the gold effect. Notice to this folder, we have a layer mask applied. If I disable the layer mask by right clicking and selecting disable layer mask, we can see that it's this mask that is cropping the gold image perfectly inside the gradient effect. And lastly, we have the type folder. And in here, we have our type layers and solid line objects. So now I'm going to create this composition from scratch. So you can see how it was set up and how attention to the layers was paid in order to organize the structure. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new document. So I'm going to press Command N on the keyboard, and this is going to open the new doc menu. From the menu, I'm going to select International Paper from the preset. I'm going to choose A4 and set the resolution to 150 dpi and click OK. Now, you can create a document any size you like, though for this example, I'm just going to create an A4 document and set it to 150 dpi as this is going to give me a relatively large canvas area to work with. So upon creating a new document, I will have this white canvas color and in the layers panel, the first layer will be called background by default and it will have a lock icon. Now this is going to make it difficult for me to edit this layer. So first I'm going to double click on the layer and up will pop a menu asking me to rename this layer. Now because I know I'm going to start with the black background, I'm going to call this layer black base and click OK. Upon click, the icon will be removed and now I can select a black color and fill this layer in black using the paint bucket tool. Now, everyone has their own way of working in Photoshop, but I am pretty pedantic about my layer structure. And if I can, I, will, I like to organize all my layers into sections, in folders. This keeps everything really neat and tidy. So on this occasion, with my new layer selected, I'm going to press Command G to group my layer into a folder and call this background. And I'll also right click and add a blue label. Now in future, if I wish to add a new background to my artwork, I'll know I will be placing it into this folder. So now I have my black background, I want to bring in the texture. Now, I have already created my texture separately in a different document. So as not to create a busy layer structure, I'm simply going to bring the texture in as a linked smart object into my composition. Bringing in linked smart objects is really convenient as this allows you to focus on a particular creative element independently and then bring it into a complete composition like this. So next I'm going to come up to file, scroll down and click place linked. So I'll navigate to my downloadable project folder to the textures folder and select the triangle texture and click place. Upon click, the texture will appear in the canvas area with an automatic free transform applied. This will enable me to instantly scale this up nicely to fit to the size I want. So I'm just going to blow this up like so. Once I'm happy, I will press enter now notice in the layers panel, we now have a small link icon on the layer. Now this is Photoshop telling us that the artwork on this layer exists externally and not in this document. If I now go ahead and double click on the linked 
object thumbnail, we will open up the original texture in a new tab like so. So I'll press Command W to close this document tab and we will come back to my new document. So currently the texture is black, but I want the texture to be white. So if I double click on the gray area of the new layer, I will call up layer styles. Over on the left, I'm going to select color overlay and from the right, I'm going to click into the color box and type in F six times to get a perfect white color. Click OK, and now our texture is white. Excellent. So just like earlier, with my new layer selected, I'm going to press Command G to group it into its own folder, and I'll name this folder Pattern. Right click and assign a green label. Now in future, if I wish to change the pattern or add more, I'll know to come right back to this folder. So next, I want to create a gradient effect over the entire surface of my canvas area. So I'll press Command Shift N to create a new layer and I'll name this layer Gradient. Next, I'm going to come over to the menu and focus on the foreground and background color. So first, I'm going to click on the foreground color and enter in the color 3098D9. This will give me a blue color like so and click OK. With the foreground color set to blue, I will then click on the background color and enter in the color F9214F and click OK. So now I have a foreground and a background color set in my menu. Next, I'm going to come over to the paint bucket tool and click and hold and select the gradient tool. With the gradient tool active, I'm going to come into the canvas area and click and drag a line from the top to bottom. Upon release, I will have a nice gradient effect like so. If I am not entirely happy with the first instance, I can continue to click and drag until I get the gradient effect I want. So once my gradient is created, I'm then going to come into the layers panel. With my gradient layer selected, I'm going to click on the blending mode options and select multiply. Now this effect is going to be cast over the entire composition to every layer below this layer in the layers panel. For example, if I drag this layer below the pattern, we will not see it. So when using blending modes, we must keep in mind the hierarchy of the layer structure. Now I'm also pedantic about my blending modes. Every time I apply a blending mode, I will document this in the layer itself. Sometimes you can build a complex document with hundreds of layers and it's going to be hard to remember what's going on. So I'll double click on this layer and add open brackets, multiply, close brackets. And that is telling me what blending mode is applied to this layer at a glance. So again, with this layer selected, I will press Command G to group the layer and name this gradient and right click and apply a red label. So next I'm going to bring an image into my composition and I'm going to use the same technique as earlier. So I'll come to file and scroll down and select place linked. So I'll navigate to the project folder and this time select the golden face template from the toots docs folder. So on this occasion, we can see the image is filling the canvas size. So I'm going to press and hold shift and alt on the keyboard and click and drag the top right handle in to scale down like so. Once I'm happy, I will press enter. Now notice this has a white background. Well, this is because this document has been created earlier in another document. So if I double click on the new linked smart object thumbnail, we will open up the document in another tab. And here we can see a new document entirely. Though in this document, we can see we have a folder called background at the bottom of the layers panel. So I'm going to toggle the visibility of this background folder. And now we can see we have a transparent background. So I'll press Command W to close the document and save. And now we are back into our new document and we can see the texture behind. Excellent. Now I want to boost the shine of this image. So I'm going to come to the bottom of the layers panel and click the add adjustment layer icon and select brightness and contrast. Upon click, up will pop the properties panel and here I'm just going to push up the contrast a little. 
Now, be very careful when using adjustment layers. If your adjustment layer in the layers panel is above other layers, when you first create the adjustment layer, it will apply to everything below. So if you just want the adjustment layer to only apply to the layer directly below, be sure to click the adjustment layer clip button at the bottom of the adjustment layer panel. If you have done this correctly, you will see a little arrow on the adjustment layer in the layers panel. Great. So now I'll select this new adjustment layer in the layers panel, press and hold shift and select the linked smart object. With them both selected, I will press command G and this will group them both into a new folder. I'll double click the folder name and rename this to gold face. Right click and assign a yellow label, easy. So now all that's left to do is add the type to my composition. But before I do that, I want to edit my current document to add some more details. Now I'm going to add some layer masks to the folders. So first I'm going to start with my gold face here. So I have just imported the image, but now I want to crop it slightly. So to do this, I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle selection over my image like so of how I would like to crop the image. With the selection over my image, I'm going to select the gold face folder, then click the add layer mask button at the bottom of the layers panel. This will then mask the folder like so. Now it's important on this occasion to mask the folder and not the image itself. Now this is convenient because now I can come into my gold face folder and scale the image in size to any size I like and the crop area will remain intact. And if I choose to add a new image into this folder, the mask will be applied to everything inside. Perfect. So now I have a mask area on the image, I can now use this very same mask area to create a new mask on the gradient folder to reveal the white texture within my cropped image zone. To do this, I can right click on the new mask thumbnail on the gold face folder and select add mask to selection. Upon click, we will have the selection identical to the mask. Now, if I press Command Shift I on the keyboard, this is going to invert the selection. So now we no longer have the selection inside, but a perfect selection outside. Now, if I come to the gradient folder, with the selection active, I'm going to click the add layer mask icon. And upon click, we will have created a mask on the gradient folder that allows for the white texture to come through like so. Next, I want to create a black border around my composition. So just like earlier, with the rectangle marquee tool, I will draw a selection around my document, leaving a small buffer from the outside, like so. This time, I will select the pattern folder and click the add layer mask button, and the pattern folder will be masked away and we will have this nice black border. So using masks here, we were able to apply some nice layout effects without damaging or erasing any image layers. So now all that's left to do is create the type. So with the top gold face folder selected, I will press T to activate the type tool and I'll click and add in a type element. I will type in the text and customize the font, font size, color, and tracking in the character panel. I will press and hold command, then press D and enter to deselect the type. And if my type is not the right size, I can press command T to activate free transform and scale up or down accordingly. And I'll press enter and move it into place like so. To quickly duplicate the type object, I will press and hold Alt on the keyboard and click and drag down, place my type roughly into position, then press T to activate the type tool to click into the type and edit the type object. Now to get the line effects, I'm going to press Command Shift N to create a new layer and name this layer line left. 
Then I'll use the Rectangle Marquee tool to draw a slim rectangle shape and use the Paint Bucket tool to fill the selection with a solid white colour. If I'm not happy with the shape, I'll press Command T to activate Free Transform, zoom in and change it like so. And once I am happy, I'll press and hold Alt and click and drag over to the right to quickly duplicate the layer. And I may just quickly double click into the layer and change left to right. Then I'll position my lines in place. With them both selected, in the Layers panel, I can press the Align Vertical Center button to make sure they are properly aligned. And then I'll position and resize my type object accordingly. Once I'm happy with my type composition, I'll select the top layer, press and hold Shift, and then select the bottom type layer. With them all selected, I'll press Command G to group them into one folder and double click on the folder name and call this Type. I'll right click and add a violet color label. And that completes the overall composition. So if we reflect on the composition as a whole, what we now have is a really neat and tidy document. All layers are named, grouped into sections, and even color coded. There would be no real difficulty for us now to come back to this document in a few weeks time or share this document with someone else and see exactly what's going on. So I hope this video helps you think about being creative in Photoshop, not just with your images, but with your layer structure in order to achieve your creative goals. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, hit the like button on my Facebook page. If you'd like to see more videos like this in future, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial. All links are in the description. Well, that's it for another video brought to you by tastytutes.com. Thanks for watching. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you next time.